This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we are on our first call Monday morning here and the building seems to be being pulled into a negative pressure because they weren't heating very well. But now that they've got the system turned off, it is heating. Let's go up here and take a look, see what we got going on. So I just replaced these filters because the other ones were starting to come apart. They look fine. Okay. See through them. Man, it is cold up here. I think it said 19 on my display. I don't know if I hear anything going on here. Okay. What do we got going on here? So burner off intake air thermostat can't run unless it's 50 degrees out. Operation controls red. Limit does not feel tripped. Uh, airflow switch just made. So we're not getting a call for, for the uh, fan to run. So we've got power, obviously. Oh, there we go. We tripped on uh, overload. That's nice. Let's get our meter out here and see what amperage we're pulling. See if we're over amping. Cause man, that, that thing sounds like it's hauling hauling the goods to, to the market. Let's see what kind of amps we're getting here. <sighs> Looks like three phase. That's kind of hanging in there like that, which makes me think, okay, it's been diddle dinked with recently. So there's 10.9. That looks like it's set pretty low. 10.6, 11.1, and 10.2. Voltage, survey says 211, 212, 214. Coming at the bottom of it, 212. 211, close enough to 214. Coming out of the bottom, 211, 212, and 213, almost 14. So voltage is fine. Looking at that setting there, usually you want just a little over what it's rated for. Yeah, we're set up just a little under 15-ish area right there but we did trip. So let's take a peek at the motor and see where we're at on that. Well, you shouldn't just kill it, but right here, we'll kill it this way. We'll turn the burners off. That will turn off just the main burner. That cold air is 19 degrees come through here. We'll drop that temperature in a heartbeat. That way it won't. Now we can go ahead and shut it off. How about that? Man, my fingers can't feel crap. Slide this over head of the bus. That's a Hubble. That's hard to believe it's that chintzy. So the belts are fresh. They look good. Pulley is cranked up. Data plate looks like it's been dinked with. There we go. Let's see if I can read this thing. I need to, I should have brought my glasses up here. Sucks like having LASIK and then after all these years, you gotta go back to wearing glasses again. Okay, so 13.6 on 230. 13.6. So I think we set those up, I think it's either 10% or 20% over what you figure it's gonna run. So 13.6, and that's at 230 volt. This is running 214. So it's gonna pull a little more than that 13, whatever you wanna call it. You could probably take that up just a touch more. Don't quote me on this, but what did I say? 13.4, it's just 13.5 plus 15%. Two extra amps at right of 15 amps. But we're also got a little deduction for that voltage being a little lower than what they rated it at. And it really looks like this thing's been changed a little bit. And according to that, 15 is about as low as it goes. 
That's 16 ish area right there. We'll go 17 just to see how that goes. That belt there is a little looser than that belt. Okay, let's see if maybe by chance, I'm trying to think of what would be some examples of what that would do it. I mean, obviously with the door off, it would do it. Okay, it's pulling in. It's set up for 60 degrees here. Damper's opening up. That'd be another thing which actually would lower the amperage. So, yeah, there's our burner. And they're definitely hauling the bacon to, to town there. Okay, with the door off, we're pulling 15.5, 15.6, we're not tripping. So that extra amp over, there's 16, and there's 15.1. Okay, fired off just now, 11 amps. 11, 11.9. Now, we could have us a problem with the motor not starting every time. At this point, I don't, don't know if that's an issue or not. Well, that's, there we go, there we go, get you a little twist. I always love it when they give us a nice reading like that. Manifold's not very high, but it's not hot firing probably too horribly hard. We're only going for 60 degrees here on that which, you know, it's a kitchen, 10 degrees below room temperature. It's gonna feel good and cool. Let's go down and see how that does with the, uh, as far as the doors, not uh, opening and closing and whether or not we're sucking all the heat out of everything. Now here is our inspection port. I've drilled little bitty holes in the end of that so you can kind of see the flame. I can't see squat through that. I'm kind of curious to make sure the flame is working. I'm not talking drilling the whole thing out, but Otherwise, if you got some sandpaper and some buffing pads and some of that paste, you could probably buff it out or you could order a new one. I just like putting a little hole in there like that. There we go. You can see what's going on. It's not hardly firing. I mean, it's definitely got a decent fireball. It's got little baskets uh, or little ball size. It's definitely not uniformed all the way across. I'd say we might have a little bit of dirt on it, but that's not gonna cause any issues with building being in a negative and motor tripping. So that's something we could always do at a later date. Yeah, it's definitely getting cold out here. The old tape, this is good 3M stuff and it's barely flopping. Let's go over here and check some of these exhaust hoods. She's hauling the mail. That one's not June Jack. That one's hauling the mail. I mean, I don't know why we're hauling it. That's, that thing's like taking the biscuits to the, to the bakery like something fierce. That heating unit's running. Uh, that one hasn't ran for a while. This one's got issues. One of these had issues, I turned it off. I don't know if anybody came back and replaced heat exchanger or something. There was some issues with one of these. This one hasn't ran for a while either. Look at it. We got the snowy type stuff on top here. And this is the area that they were complaining about. Uh, somebody's been up here recently. This one had increased fan speed. Um, it was not, I think it was, yeah, the filters are getting a little dirty. She just turned off. And yeah, they're looking a little shoddy. 9, 12, 22, them suckers are already pretty dirty for only being 10, 11, 12, three months old. Holy crap. Feels good down there though. I can feel the heat. Wow, yeah. Something about running gas lines right in front of the exhaust. It seems to just really be an appeal to people. Yeah, so like half these units don't even look like they're running. I went through all this, like I said, in September and looked at them. That's still running. Oh yeah, I love this. So why are we running the air conditioning in this weather? Why is the economizer not working? Unless the second stage is calling. So you got heat kicking onto the ones and you got, that's just stupid. I mean, it literally is, it's 19 degrees out. Dangerous, conditions are extreme, delayed, blah, blah, blah. Feels like 10, awesome. Thought I felt a little cold out here. Probably wouldn't hurt to check at. Okay, that control looked new because somebody only put one screw in it. Which it kind of just wiggles there. 
it uh, I would say it probably never got properly set up like I said it was just at the very bottom so it was about 14 they set it right at the exact amperage so a lot of times I mean you got to have a little bit of leeway there at least going out of memory I'd have to look it up but looking at it from here yeah you can you kind of see the back side of it I don't think you can see and eh, maybe you can get right to this it should shut down oh wow it's actually letting the flames run look at that normally that would trigger out we're pretty clean from what i'm seeing yeah everything's clean everything's open that damper kind of flopping around like it is is kind of making it work you guys have asked about why does the carbon monoxide and stuff uh, not affect them because it's just bringing outside air in you're bringing in all this air carbon monoxide is incomplete combustion so if you can have perfect combustion you'll have no carbon monoxide if you you know you got all this air coming through it's burning completely clean if i have time i'll grab my analyzer and stick it in the duct air <clears throat> so you can measure it but you're not going to have anything if you do it's going to be low five five parts per million maybe 10 parts per million i think we're allowed up to 30 over an eight hour period i don't recommend doing what i just did but i was prepared for it to do it if it was going to do it but that thing's really pulling pretty strong i don't know why we got so much air but probably because they got everything cranked up i'm assuming that we probably hired somebody to come do it but it's hard to say let's go ahead and put her together let's go downstairs and see how the building feels this building was uh purchased uh, recently and was uh redone for a different restaurant so some of the things have changed the way things were designed so uh, not not the same loads not the same kind of food being cooked either before we go down there let's go ahead and check this rooftop unit over see what's going on why is this thing running the air conditioning is it just the fan motor sticking on might just be the fan motors only i don't hear i don't hear compressors don't know why that would be but anything's possible with allied air glorified looking linux nope i hear compressors uh suction side's warm that's kind of odd discharge is kind of warm i feel the suction on the other one it's running hot too yeah, I don't know. Here's our economizer control. Let's take a peek at our voltage coming into the unit. Go from common to Y1, we got juice. Y2, we got 25 volts, 0.8. Nothing on W, nothing on that. We do have a call for G. And between R and common, we have 26.1. Do we have a call on both Y1 and Y2? Yes, we do. That's why it's running the economizer, or not running the economizer. That, that's high quality right there. Yeah, when you have uh, both stages calling, that's uh, causing the economizer to not run. Minimum position, DC set. If I can find the ABC thing, there it is. Yeah, see, I can turn it all the way up to A, and it's not doing squat. Minimum position is pretty much set down to jack. What we need to do is find out why is it calling for that much cooling down there. We can pull this one wire off of two here and it should shut down. Well, that's working really well, ain't it? Okay. Yeah. We're just gonna burn stuff up at this kind of temperatures. Okay, back on. See if the economizer comes on. It ain't. Yeah, we need to update this to a Jade controller. Not good. You know where they got that put at? That's probably junk. I mean, you're just gonna suck water in. Somebody's gonna spray it with a hose to wash off the filters the cheap, easy way, and they're gonna ruin it. Let's go minimum position, see where we're at on that, if it'll adjust. It actually is. Look at that stuff. And grab a dog all the way open, see what happens. They're dirty as all get out. Greasy. Nice and greasy. Those need change pretty good. Okay, so our minimum position system does work. So we can turn that down a little bit. Now that we're not in winter, or not in summer, we can set minimum position back to normal. That's partially what's going on here is our 
got the makeup air unit like they got it to probably make up for not bringing anything into the economizer here. Okay, there we go. We've got that bringing in some air. Of course, these filters will get trashed before you know it. Let's see if we got a call for cooling yet. We do not. Let's go down there and find out what's going on with that. I had some problems with these compressors when I was uh, here in the summer, and I don't think we ever did get back on it. We were so busy. Yeah, I don't know what the minimum temperature and all that stuff is. I don't know, do we have an outside freeze protection deal on this? Like the carrier has. Below ambient kit optional. Of course it is. Why wouldn't we sell you a new compressor? Yeah, there needs just to be a lockout on that. It'd be better if they could switch it to a Jade controller. If they did, then you'd be able to just tell it exactly when you want things to lock out on instead of having to add snap disk style thermostats and things like that. Let's go downstairs, see how things are as far as the building negative wise. Um, we are bringing in a little air. Didn't get too crazy. We'll put all that back together in a minute. All right, so here's the kitchen. RTU4, that is the right one. I need to make sure these are actually set up right. Show Y1 and Y2, but let's see if it's programmed that way. When I pulled this off the wall, it did just kind of pull off really easy. I mean, it just doesn't snap on there. I mean, look, it pulls off awful easy. I don't like that. See, that's just three, one and one. Yeah, sensor, sensor. All right, I'm gonna go grab the manual for this thing and see if I can make sure it's programmed right. Minimum cool set point should never be below 68. Heating should never be above 72. Seven, let's go 74. 74 just in case something's wrong. So that's all, all fine. This area out here is what we had some issues with. Maybe you got spiral duct coming around all the way along the outside here working its way around so it, it definitely had to crank some air all right so we just walked the whole building and that's not cool calling for it so we'll just jump it up on the roof the fan is on so all i gotta do is just jump y and then we'll make sure and then we'll i got permission to go ahead and add just the thermostat i'll just go with a simple uh, walking cooler thermostat and make sure that it shuts off at like say 45 degrees or something opens and closes now no problem at all he said he was having a hard time for a while now Okay, so it just kicked on a minute ago. We still came on even with the W or the Y2 unhooked. So I'm gonna go through here and see if I can figure out if there's something I'm not seeing. Cause there's been a lot of fingers in things. Like here's SR2. One of them's gonna be your return air sensor. You got your outdoor sensor. Well, I should say your mixed air temperature. Mi mixed air temperature sensor is gonna modulate the damper so that it only opens it up as far as it needs to. But generally it will not run the uh, compressor mechanical cooling once it gets below the temperature that the free cool set is set point is, um, it should not be and allow it to run. So if it doesn't know doesn't know what the outdoor temperature is, that can throw it off and it could be trying to run, um, which I, I have a funny feeling that might be something that's going on. I may have to go grab my one of my other books because I don't think this has got much in here schematic wise. What I need, that's that's kind of what we got going on here. I was, I'm going to just put a thermostat there on there so it breaks Y2 whenever it gets below 45 degrees, 50 degrees, something like that. It don't, it, the economizer should be more than adequate. But I, I don't wanna like wipe out Y2 completely because then it won't run in the summertime. So that's why we gotta use some sort of stat to do that. Usually they'll use a snap disc, but I don't have it and I ain't got time for that. Right now what I need to do is just figure out where's my outdoor sensor at? Is it working right? I mean, you can tell that there's not factory and uh, find out if everything's wired correctly. Should be able to crank this free cool up and it should surely shut off. That's all the way up to A. I have a feeling that thing's not working right or the sensor's junk. What I've got here is an old manual, which is, I don't know how old, but this thing has got all the information you're gonna want. It's got your wiring, it's got the logic of how it works. And like even right here, they're telling you that the ambient lockout control is set point 50 degrees. Here's what I need in the very back. Check out procedure, differential enthalpy and single enthalpy. I think we're set up for dual or differential. So turn your DC max to mid position, place a 620 ohm resistor uh, across SO and positive, and then a 1.2, which I think is what's inside my little jumper box. Place the 1.2 on there and the free LED turns on. The motor drives to approximately 45 degrees half open. All right, so we're at 1.2K ohms. That is on our enthalpy setting here on my device that I built. This is what I used for my uh, train 
uh, testing. Uh, but I, I built that into one box just to make it simple. But all I need is the 1.2. Unfortunately, I forgot to put a 600 in there because usually I don't have dual enthalpy. I couldn't see it because all these wires were on top of it, but the free cool light is not on. So that's gonna tell me right there the outside temperature sensor's not working. Uh, we can go ahead and check the SR Plus and uh, whatever you wanna call it, the SR. Let's see what resistance that is, that's our indoor. Should be our indoor mix. Pretty sure we should be able to get a, a good reading on that one. Uh, I'm not getting anything at all. That sucks. That should be our 630 ohm one. Yeah, we ain't got jack on that. The other one, I'd be real surprised if this one's okay. I'm not getting squat on it, but like I said, this meter sometimes, I, I have my lingering doubts about it when it comes to resistance. It, it, it doesn't go up super high. Leads are good, point of, point 0.1. If that's the case, then both sensors are junk, and then we'll just need to go grab both of them. I don't know where that one's going to. That, that should be my mixed air sensor, if I remember right. There we go. Free cool is on, look at that. Mm-hmm. So we know the outdoor sensor thing is junk. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it from B to A, and we should be able to teeter-tot on and off. So right now it's free cool, and look at that. It's driving right open. Our outdoor sensor's junk. As we go down to our ABCD, we're gonna rotate it backwards, and it should go out, or one should go on, one should go out. So the other one, it's not working because I don't have a 620 ohm resistor on there. At this point, we either need to go get a 620 ohm resistor or our mixed air sensor, just a regular generic one, which I could really care less. Mixed air temperature sensor would be more reliable if that's the one I need. Thermistors generally don't go bad, nowhere near that fancy stuff. So we are at 4,200 ohms right there. So that mixed air sensor is working, I believe. So that means if we get that 620 on there along with an outdoor sensor, it's gonna maintain a certain discharge. Mixed air, usually 55 or something odd degrees. Won't let it get below that. So I need to call our supplier here in town and see if they've got it. Uh, looking in here, I can see corrosion already in there. This is the 7400A. All that fancy garbage electronics. They poured some uh, some uh, stuff on there to help protect the circuitry, but you can see right there, she got wet. That's a perfect corrosion for water. That's your problem. That's why she's wanting to run. That and that dual entropy thing, I think it's junk. So we're just gonna change that out. All right, so I called the suppliers as usual. Neither two of them has it. So we're gonna have to order that. So we will wire this up. For right now, I am just going to pull off Y1 and Y2. There's no reason for either one of them to be running. We'll just come back on that. But that's that's what we had uh, with this unit here. Um, this little decade box here literally has all the train things. Train resistance is built into it. And then I added had one extra one. I thought, hey, MPP would be awesome because I used to have just a jumper with a resistor on it. And that usually worked just fine. So I need to still build one with the 630 because man usually usually they have that and for whatever reason uh you know they went fancier went with the dual enthalpy we're just going to get rid of that there's no need for it i mean it's a nice feature when you're doing comfort cooling we're doing raw dog cool it down get the heck done you know kitchen here we've got the wires for that hooked back up all right so that's going to wrap that one up for now uh may 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 or may not come back and uh, record that because i mean all we got to do is put the enthalpy sensor on there we've already tested the economizer control proved that it works when we uh had the correct readings for it to uh economize or not uh ended up mounting that enthalpy bulb through the wall uh partially sticking in there into the economizer section where the filters are at that'll get air drawn across it and so it'll be accurate for that I was a little leery of leaving it in that compartment just because they had uh, compressors down below and I was afraid we might pick up some temperature off of it and cause it to uh, false alarm or whatever. Otherwise, the makeup air thing, uh, I think we're good to go on that unless we've got a motor going out. We'll find out soon enough if that's an issue. That's about it, guys. So if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and click notifications. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.